Hey, this is Renee. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And this is the second part for the multi symbol RSI program. In the first um, part, we managed to write this program that just trades the RSI indicator in one symbol. So we sell over 70 and we buy under 30. So the classical RSI strategy. And I mean, you could use this program on multiple charts, but maybe you want to use it on one chart and trade multiple currencies. Or maybe you just want to learn how to do this. And this is what we want to do in this video. So let's take the code from the last video. Of course, if you didn't watch the last video, you should, because otherwise it doesn't make sense to watch this one. And um, now we want to um, make sure that we trade multiple symbols. And there is a really easy way to do so. I think the, the easiest way to do so is just to define the symbols you want to trade, right? So I would, or you could create a array for this, an array for this, and just add all the symbols um, you want to uh, to trade into this array. So just declare a glo global array um, using a string type um, format here. And string type means it's pretty much a text. So you can store text in a string type variable like this. And this is a text and you can store it in a string type variable. In this case, we don't want to create just one um, variable, but we need an array and we want to store multiple values in this array. So we can do it like this using these curly brackets. And now we can go ahead and store, for example, USD Japanese Yen in this array. Um, doesn't work. There's a problem. <laughs> Uh, wait, uh, do I have to use this? Yes, I do. Okay, so I forgot the semicolon, but I can store USD Japanese Yen and I can add Euro USD and I can add GBP uh, USD like this. And what else do we have? Uh, Euro USD, GBP. Um, I could store Australian dollar USD, Australian dollar out. USD. So you can see where this is going. And yeah, I can just store multiple values in this array. And now we want to do something else. Also for our handle RSI um, variable here, we want to make this an array also. So in the on init function, we don't only have to create the handle for the RSI for this one symbol, but instead we have to do it for all of these symbols. So how can we do this? First of all, let's say um, handle RSI should be um, resized. So we take the, oh wait, we use array resize and we provide the handle that we want to resize and we want to have the new size, which should be the array size of symbols because we need as many symbols, uh, as many handles as um, we have symbols, right? So. Maybe we can just call this handles. So it's handles and symbols. Looks a little bit uh, beautiful, I think. So like this. And now what we want to do is we don't want only one um, RSI handle, but instead we will create a handle for every single value in the symbols array. So we can do it like this. We use a loop and we loop through this symbols array like this. And uh, we create a handle or we store a handle in the handles array at the index, uh, at index i. And here we use I R, the irsi function, but for the symbol, we use the symbol in the symbols array at index i. Again, period will be period current, uh, MA period is 14 and price close also stays the same. But like this, we will create multiple handles and store them in the handles array instead of just creating one. And now if we compile this, we will get a bunch of errors or only one error because this doesn't work anymore because we now have multiple handles in the handles array, not only the handle RSI variable. So what do we want to do? Um, I think, um, yeah, maybe here we can just choose the chart symbol. And if the chart symbol creates a new bar, we want to process the code. So what we want to do is here, we want to move all of this pretty much out of this if statement. So just let me cut this out here. And then we want to create a function for this. So we can say void um, uh, do stuff, something like this. 
And this is a new function that I just created. So this function does not return anything. It's of type void. The return um, type is void. Do stuff is the name that I chose. We do not have any parameters. So the parameters here are, um, the parentheses are empty. And then we have a body. In this body, I paste the code that I just cut from above. So here, um, we will now do the stuff, whoops, with this uh, RSI here. So we will do all of this, but for a specific symbol, right? Like this. And um, yeah, we will need a symbol and, an, um, uh, and a handle like this. These two will be our parameters. So whenever someone wants to call this do stuff function, and this has to be explicitly called because it's not a event handling function like the on tick. This is a function that I created. So we will have to call it in some of these event handling functions. And this do stuff um, function, it has two parameters, symbol and handle. So everywhere here, we will now have to exchange the USD Japanese Yen hard-coded symbol with symbol. And we will have to um, exchange this handle RSI here with the handle from the parameter, right? And the rest can stay pretty much like this. So here we have to say symbol. Here we have to symbol. Also where we, um, yeah, okay. Let's just run it like this, right? So in our on tick function, now we want to loop through the array. So what we can do here is, again, we, we will use the exact same loop here, right? So we say for in i is equal to zero, i is smaller equal uh, array size, um, symbols, and then i plus plus. Then we go for every symbol in the symbols array, we want to do stuff. So we provide the symbol at, in the symbols array at index i, and we have the handle in the handles array at index i. And that's pretty much it. So it's this easy. I mean, there are one or two things we will have to modify, but I want to run it like this already. So if I give it a go, we will see uh, multiple things. First of all, we do not only get one chart in the tester, but we get four charts because we will use all of these four charts. And we created the RSI for all of these four charts. Um, so you can see there is the RSI in all of these four charts. And if there is a signal, we should trade it, right? So let's wait for a signal. And we do not see anything. So something is not working. Let me check what I messed up. Okay, we have an error out of range error. You can always see the runtime errors in the journal at line 36 at position 37. So let's search for line 36, which is here. And 37. Okay, my problem is I had this smaller equal and it has to be smaller. Then it should work because we have, for example, five symbols in this array, but we cannot check the array at index five because indexing starts at zero. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, and not five. This is why we got this array out of range error. I made a separate video for this if you're interested. Um, to learn more about this array out of range error, just search for it on the channel. So let me um, run the test again now. And now we should not see this error anymore. Also, yeah, I, I think I should, I could change the testing period. So the test will load a little bit faster. And let's give it another go. Wait. Testing dates doesn't really work. Why not? Oh, like this. Okay, so let's go. Here we can see, oh, we can see the first trade already. It is a USD Japanese Yen trade because it was below 30. So let's check the other symbols. <clears throat> there was no signal yet, but we should also see other signals and other trades soon. Okay, here we see something that I want to wanted to, to show you. So we, we see that the buy position in USD Japanese Yen was closed, even though we do not have a counter signal. And we have a signal in USD, uh, in Australian dollar USD. 
this is a problem because here we had a signal and the problem is that the Australian dollar, US dollar signal closed the USD Japanese yen trade. This is because in our code, we in the do stuff function, we say we loop through all the positions. And then we search for any position and if this is a buy position or sell position, we, we close it if there's a uh, counter signal. But instead of doing this, first of all, we will have to check if position gets string position uh, symbol is equal to the symbol from the parameter that we are checking right now. So let's move all of this in the body of this if statement that I just created and this will make sure that this does not happen anymore. So if we start the program again, we will see multiple positions open at the same time because the different symbols do not close the trades of the other symbols. So here you can see every symbol will now have a open position and these positions should be turned around whenever there's a uh, counter signal in this specific symbol. So this um, yeah, is pretty much more, a little bit more what we want, I think. So let's um, see, wait, there's no signal in USD. Oh yeah, um, yeah, so you can see every, every symbol should work completely independent from the other charts. And this is great. So there's um, maybe one last thing that we can add, which is, which is the magic number. Because right now, this would still cause problems if you have another expert advisor or if you want to open manual trades in one of these uh, symbols. Because the EA would still close these trades if it's the same symbol. So to fix this, we can use the magic number. And the magic number is a concept that I explained on the channel before. Uh, you will find a video for this on, in the channel videos. Just search for magic number René Balke on YouTube and you will find it. And the magic number can be used to say that um, this specific expert advisor or this specific trade object variable should use this magic number, which means that every position this trade object opens has this magic number stored in the in the background pretty much. This means that if we loop through the trades here, we cannot only check for the symbol, but we can also check for position get integer, position magic. And we can uh, check if this is equal to the magic number. So this, adding this code will not change the outcome of the program. I mean, it's still completely the same. As you can see here, uh, there's no difference, but the difference is that if you use multiple EAs or if you do manual trading, you can choose a different magic number for every single EA, and then you will be able to trade multiple EAs in the same account. And yeah, you can see here, EA is doing fine. It's pretty much a cash co, a winning machine. No, I'm just joking. I mean, for this period, it seems to work quite fine, but there might be periods where it's not doing so well, as you can see here. But uh, yeah, this is just to show you a program that works in multiple currencies. And you can add whatever you want. I mean, I could add DE40. I think it's called DE40, right? Yeah, I could uh, add DE40. I can even call uh, or add Bitcoin USD. I can add whatever I want. And if I compile this and run the program again, you will see that we will trade these symbols as well. And I think this is kind of great, isn't it? And yeah, you can see now we also lo load the 40 and yeah, you can see here and it is trading just, yeah, just fine. Also we have Bitcoin USD, it's trading just fine. So you can see, I mean, this is a bad trade kind of, but <laughs> like the logic of the program works. And maybe you want to say, I don't want to trade 0 0.1 lots in every single chart. So there's also an easy way to fix this or to, to add this. So you could say, for example, I want to have another array here, like with the lot sizes. And I could say that for USD Japanese Yen, I want to have 0 0.1 lot. For um, Euro US Dollar, I want to have 0 0.1. For GBP USD, I want 0 0.05. For Australia Dollar, US Dollar, I want to have 0 0.3, like this. And yeah, maybe let me delete DE40 and Bitcoin uh, again. And now we have three arrays and we can use these lots. Oh, wait, 
Ah, okay. Yeah, we should not call it lots, but we can call it um, uh, volumes, something like this maybe. Yeah, and now you can add another parameter here for this function, which will be volume or the trading volume. And we can say volumes at index i. And now whenever we call a or we open a position, we just tr use the volume from this um, parameter. So let me run this one last time. And you will th see this will change the outcome again because now every position or every symbol, as you can see here, trades with a different lot size. So this is how you can easily use a strategy and move it to a separate function and then call it for different symbols with different lot sizes and yeah, just have to create different handles of course for every symbol, but it is as easy as this. And yeah, make sure that you play around with this concept. You can use this for every indicator, for every strategy you like. And of course you can make all of these things variable, like the threshold for buy and sell positions, but just adding more of these uh, parameters here. So it's, it's really easy and I hope that I was able to deliver the message here how to do this. Also, if you want to have a deep dive in MQL5 programming, if you really want to understand everything about variables, data types, data structure, how to create different strategies, check out the first link in the video description and you will find a complete course for MQL5 programming. Also on my website, you will find a complete content list for this course. So you know exactly what you can expect and you can check like before you buy the course, you can check if it is what you are searching for. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great time. Good trades. Bye.